Look and listen for the welfare of the whole people have always in view, not only to present, but also the coming generations. Hi everyone, I'm Christina. I'm a designer at Gensler, New York. And I'm Brian Hungerford. I'm a design director at Gensler, Chicago. We're excited to be here talking about how we've leveraged our global design firm to reach our cities, uh, schools, and communities. Every 31 seconds, a kid drops out of high school in America. That's nearly one million high school dropouts a year. America's schools are designed to, uh, are designed to support only 15% of the kids with additional services. In poverty-stricken communities, over half of the kids in those schools need those additional services to get the education that they deserve. The impact of this is pretty devastating. Um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, is, is devastating. Uh, the uh, long-term effects of these dropouts affect our prison and unemployment rates, and the collective cost of that unemployed and underserved youth will cost taxpayers in the, uh, approaching $1.6 trillion across their collective lifetimes. City Year is working to change that. Yeah, so C City Year is an organization that partners with schools to bridge the gap between what students need and what schools are currently um, designed to provide. So schools that partner with City Year are two to three times more likely to um, reach their uh, state levels of math and reading and um, improve the education. The problem is that some of the spaces that they have to do this in aren't super conducive to that environment. Um, so what we've done at Gensler is partner with schools and really learn about what City Year is trying to do with the students and design spaces that help support those needs. So we recognize an overlap of Gensler and City Year locations in 12 of 27 uh, City Year service uh, locations across the country. And in Chicago, we started to work specifically with public school leadership, uh, the core members in that school, and then the skids, the kids at most high risk there. Um, the results were a des typical design process of visioning, shredding, but the really unique thing was that they never have access to people like us. Our world has been opened up to them. Um, and the most critical part of our engagement is that uh, we do this entire thing through donations, uh, and leaning into our uh, design partners like Turner Construction and other vendors, and we do it all for free 99. Yeah, so all the furniture, materials, service is all donated 100%, um, and all the hours are done after school, before school, and through the weekends. The yeah, collective impact of this has really been remarkable. Yeah, so we deliver world-class design, um, which allows City Year to engage with the students and focus more on the work um, and not have to worry about the environments in which they're in. So we've seen the impact be pretty uh, layered because it, the public schools see their value grow. Um, the City Year core members are exposed to a global design firm and then the students are, see their design community really coming together to impact their future. So in five years' times, we scaled this from Chicago to hit 203 kids to 7,000. And now in the Northeast region, we've impacted 15,000 kids across four, four cities. We're here in Austin today talking about the other eight locations where we overlap and trying to reach them as we have in the Northeast. So what we also hope to do, um, besides our partnership with City Year, is to talk to you here today in Austin um, and really grow this initiative we're here as resources, and uh, we have contacts in City Year all over the U.S., and um, really grow this thing. So with that, Ubuntu. I am a person through other people. My future is tied to yours. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Shane, would you like to start? Um, yeah, um, I would like to learn a little bit more about the collaboration between City Year and Gensler. Um, the spaces are beautiful. Uh, you know, in addition to the spaces, are there any other types of programs that came out of the collaboration? Uh, we're, we're talking about additional partnerships, bringing other people in to help um, do different types of edu educations once the kids get out of their attendance uh, patterns and poor behavior patterns. So uh, we've been approached and have uh, kind of things on, on tap to leverage the spaces. If you could kind of see, we do things both in the education world and then also in the incubator sector. And so we kind of instill that and there's a framework for that work to happen in the, in the classrooms. And now we're looking for people to come on board and really you know, 
download and share that knowledge with the kids that are receiving this help. I think um, just to go on that point, another thing that's interesting and I touched on it is like the layer of people we're impacting because you have these city or core members who give a year of their time to help um, the students and they do panels with city year that are like life after city year. Um, so we've sat on those panels and we expose them to the design industry too and they get to see that impact that it has on the community. <laughs> What's the before and after? So what are the specific challenges that city year and the public education system are facing vis-a-vis -vis their the built environment or their space that is solved by this? Well, uh, so these schools uh, get funding decreased when their graduation rates aren't adequate. So it's a really difficult choice for them to make actually to even sign up uh, city year. But so they're diverting funds to get them there to help these kids get the class and then start the work. Um, we're operating in a unique space there in that city year gets castaway spaces to do this really critical work. I mean, they're in storage rooms, they're in old libraries, they don't have a true space. So this is like white space for someone who is potentially on the ground for a year or longer. Uh, we've talked about scaling to have like, you know, a trailer that st does this kind of work. But we've shied from that because taking kids that are already at risk out of a natural learning environment is more risky than we, we felt was appropriate. So it sounds like you've built, designed and built some of these spaces and seen them in operation and then there are others you're planning on. Can you talk a little bit about what you've learned from this post-occupancy period and um, how specific are some of the design decisions to the particular students or places um, and, then how, and then are there design decisions that seem to be sort of universally um, useful at achieving the impact across all of the various places you're working? I'd say that it's very specific to the school. Um, for example, like the first project we did was a library that they don't use it as a library because they don't have a librarian. So we kind of did ways of how they can use that space and still access books, but it could be used for multiple things. And then our second project was actually an old game room that's like an incentive space um, where the city year core members take the students out and it's somewhere that they can play and learn. Um, so they weren't really leveraging that either. But we do an application process with schools and they say, you know, what is the problem in their school and what space would be the best place to kind of improve upon that. And we draw a lot of inspiration out of the charrette with the kids. So, you know, we don't want to come in and prescribe something that we think is there because of the demographic or the ethnicity. So we really sit there for, you know, a full day, four or five hours with them, listening to the things they're interested in, listen to the things that they are trying to get to in this difficult work that they're trying to achieve with the core members. And that is, I mean, ungodly inspiring uh, and gives us more than, more than we can work with actually often to make this stuff happen. And I'm sorry, we'll have to hold that question for the next round. Well, yes, okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.